Okay, so we are into the next chapter here. We're into logarithms. So this is section 8.1. We're just going to understand them. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will understand what logarithms are. As many people have commented, I tend to say so a lot. Henceforth, I'm going to be trying to not say so. My, my wife actually gave me a list of phrases or terms I can use instead of so. We'll see if I remember to do that or if it just keeps going back to so. We're going to try it. Henceforth, we are going to move forward onto the next slide here. And this is all about the purposes. The purposes for this video are going to be to discover what the properties of logarithms are. If you're having problems saying logarithms, just say logs. That's totally okay. You can do it that way. We are going to solve equations involving logarithms and word problems that are also going to involve logarithms. If you don't like word problems, too bad. You, you got to get used to it. What are logs? Let's talk about this. The definition of a logarithm is as such. So y equals log base b of x. You've probably seen this on your calculator. This is simply going to be uh, the inverse of an exponent. If you look at the exponent, I've chosen the exact same, um, the exact same base x and y value to show how this changes. The base of my logarithm becomes the base of my exponent. The y value becomes the power and the x value becomes my answer. So that you'll be able to compare between these two. Here's the exponents. The y's are the exponents and b is going to be the base. And then x is just the, the other value in this equation. This is how you can remember logs. If you're having a problem trying to understand them, you can convert between logs and exponents to understand the difference. So these two are actually inverses of each other. That's why when we did exponents, lots of times I said we can solve this using logs. Or not a lot, a few times I said you can solve it using logs because they're inverses. It was really hard to solve an exponent without knowing the inverse. Hence, you have the first big idea which is why I do the projects that way. Let's move on to the next part here. Let's solve an equation. So we want to evaluate what this is. This actually equals two. And the reason for this is the, the following here, because the base six to the power of what gives you 36. That's kind of how you can imagine this. The base to the power of what gives you the number that's inside the log. So in this case, log base six, of 36 equals two. Think about this one, log base two of 64. Now, yes, you can just plug this into your calculator, but I want you to imagine what this is like so that you can actually understand the, the concept here. We need to think two to the power of what gives you 64. In this case, it's six because two to the power of six is 34. Again, for this one, Notice here, I don't have a base. So this is actually base 10. This is a common base. It's one of the most commons. Um, when we get to natural logs, you'll see something different. But often enough, we use base 10, so we don't put a base 10 there. You'll notice on your calculator, you've got a log with nothing, and then you've got a log where there's a box in the base. If you just do the log normally, it's base 10. In this question, we want 10 to the power of what gives us 1,000, so that's going to be 3, because 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. You kind of get the picture at this point. How about this one? It's log base 4 of 0 0.25, so 4 to the power of what gives you 0 0.25? This is going to be negative 1. So yes, you can have negative logs. So this is because 4 to the negative 1 is 0 0.25. And... I just realized it went from C to E with no D, but that's okay. I'm not going to change that one. Let's try one where we're now going to solve for X. So here's our problem. Log base nine of X equals negative two. 
rearranging this into exponents, we get 9 to the power of negative 2 equals x. Please familiarize yourself with switching back and forth. You should be able to do this without thinking. This is pretty easy to solve for. You just do it like that. Let's try log x equals 2. Again, for this, the base is 10. So 10 to the power of 2 is equal to x, which is just 100. Not too bad. More solving. Log base x of 9 equals 2 over 3. I highly doubt you can just do shift solve in your calculator. You need to be able to do something like this. Again, base to the power of 2 over 3. So x to the power of 2 over 3 equals 9. In order to get x by itself, I need to do the opposite root. So I'm going to put both sides to the power of 3 over 2 because that's going to cancel out the power over the x. Because remember, a power to a power, this is our power law. You multiply those two powers, which will give you a power of 1. So x equals the square root of 9, all cubed. So square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the power of 3 is going to give you 27. Another one. 9... Uh, log base 9 of 27 equals x. Again, you could just plug that into your calculator, but I'm going to show you the process of how you'd get this. So you'd go like this. I can turn these into the same base. So both of those are 3 to the power of something. Again, on the right, a power to a power. So I can multiply the powers. Since the base is the same, the powers have to be the same. So I get 3 equals uh, 2x, and then x is just 3 over 2. Hopefully you're starting to recognize a pattern with this. Let's try this one. So log base 3 of 0 equals x. Put this into exponent form. So 3 to the power of x equals 0. So what, uh, 3 to the power of what would give you 0? Well, you can't do that. There's no solution. There's no way to go something to the power of something equals zero. This is impossible. So that just doesn't work. Let's try this one. <clears throat> so rearranging this into an exponent, 5 to the power of what will equal negative 2? Again, there's no solution. There is no way I can put some number in for x and get a negative power. Because 5 times itself, however many times, never negative. Edit this, edit this, edit all this stuff out. Therefore, in looking at these equations, we've actually got a couple of rules here. So you cannot have a zero or a negative number in a log, which I think I put into a later slide. How about this? Log base 1 of 12 equals x. Oh yeah, the, the rules are coming. So here we go. 1 to the power of what gives you 12? Not possible. No matter how many times you times 1 by itself, it'll never give you a 12. So here's a few notes, and this is what I alluded to. If you have a, this is your base equation that I gave you at the very beginning, x needs to be greater than 0, so I cannot have a negative number, and my base, the, the base of the log, needs to be above 0, and it cannot equal 1. So you will notice that there's similarities between the exponents and logs. Again, because they're related to each other. Again, common logs have a base 10. So if you don't see a base there, it's base 10. For example, these ones here, these are all base 10. Let's try a word problem. We want to compare amplitudes of two earthquakes if... One of them's got a magnitude 8.2, and the other's got magnitude 4.8. Here's an equation for this. This is going to be given to you in your textbook. Whenever you're given a word problem, they will either give you an equation like this, or it's going to be on the formula sheet, one of the two. So these are the two ones for, um, for the Richter scale. So if I'm going to compare two amplitudes, so amplitude A over amplitude B, this is going to equal 10 to the power of 8.2, which is the Richter scale of 1, divided by 10 to the power of 4.8, which is the magnitude of the other earthquake. Notice I didn't put A sub 0 because those cancel out. The, that's just a, a, um, a constant. 
that you don't need to know at this point. So this, you could do the algebra or just plug it straight in your calculator and you'll get that earthquake A is 2,511.9 times bigger than the magnitude 4.8 earthquake. Go through another one. We're going to compare values of A given that B, these, I have these two B values and then I give you the equation for this. So first of all, I need to take this equation, turn it into exponent form so that I can compare the A values. So now I've got A2 over A1 because A2 is bigger. Plug this in and then solve. So it's 3.98 times bigger. The algebra for this unit and for next unit, I'm next unit, just this unit. For this unit, I'm going to be going through a lot quicker. I'm expecting the algebra part you will be able to get pretty easily. And if not, come and ask me. All right, so that is the end. That's the first section of 8.1. Just as a reminder, the next section for this is going to be 8.3. Don't move on to 8.2, move to 8.3. Just to make sure that you get that. Some of you who don't watch this part won't get that. But you need to move to 8.3. If you go to 8.2, you're gonna, you're gonna just flip things around and some things won't make sense. All right, so that's 8.1. Okay, all right, I think this is working. Let's, let's give this a go. Um, hello there, past class. Um, yeah, I, I finally was able to get this to work. I don't know how many years it took me to try and figure this out. Um, but I, I managed to finally reach you in the past, before, before the incident. Um, so I need you to listen carefully and I need you to do exactly as I ask you to do. Um, I, I don't know how much time I have. So what I need you to do is I need you to make sure that you go ahead and you